we welcome you on Chad Tufat TV. Uh, please subscribe to this channel. As always, we encourage each other to do so, so that this video can reach out to many, many out there who enjoy the content that we share and the discussions that we have upon this channel. Right. Today we are discussing on uh, the flight we, that uh, we see Emerson Mnangagwa having taken to the uh, United Nations General Assembly. What are the implications of this? So Emerson Mnangagwa is going to the United Nations General Assembly as a dark horse. There is indeed a dark cloud that is hanging over him because there are many, many issues, many unresolved issues that he is uh, just braving it out. We are seeing this fake bravado that uh, ZANU-PF and its leadership are displaying to the world. And yet there's so much heat and so much pressure that is around them. So we see him now flying into the United Nations General Assembly as a dark horse. And uh, we are yet to see the reaction that he's going to be uh, meeting. We remember Robert Mugabe after he did that also, after he inaugurated himself hurriedly over a, a, a stolen election, he also traveled with Tabo Mbeki and went into uh, these uh, 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 general meetings and he was so rejected, he was so shunned that when he came back, he came back with a different idea. So we see the same repetition again that is happening now in terms of Emerson Mnangagwa. And one wonders at times why these politicians don't seem like uh, they learn from the experiences that others have gone through. You would find that we have very many similar uh, situations that Emerson Mnangagwa goes through, which he watched with his own eyes happening also during the time of Robert Mugabe. And yet you find him also just walking along the same path and the same, same trail again without you know thinking to say okay this is the same pattern this is the same repetition of what happened to my predecessor and it uh, devoured him in this way it destroyed him in this way but you find that they still maintain their arrogance and they walk right into the mouth of the lion so he goes to this uh, uh, United Nations meeting upon a uh, so many allegations while the whole world is condemned from SADC uh, observer mission to United Nations uh, or rather European Union uh, observer mission to African Union, the Catholic uh, bishops and many other organizations. When we continue to look at this, you would re realize that now that he goes there and with all the issues hanging around, he is just putting a brave face while these things are not fine internationally and even back home things are not fine and uh he gets there and uh, we wonder heaven knows what really his message is going to be like uh, save for the ordinary the usual rhetoric that is always repeating of uh, sovereignty of zimbabwe and is going to be just repeating the issue of illegal sanctions as always and once again we will still be experiencing the same again rejection of him preaching you know, just to an, an empty auditorium. Seen again as always speaking to, or rather empty chairs, because most nations of the world are really sympathizing and standing with the people of Zimbabwe, having stolen their pro the democratic uh, right to vote and to select a leader of their own choice. Emerson Mnangagwa does not care, and ZANU-PF does not care, and they continue to be bullies. They have started not only to be bullies in Zimbabwe, we see them now crossing borders into nations like Zambia, the threatening of the life of the incumbent president. And we are still waiting to see the report also that uh, President Ichilema of Zambia is going to be reading at the United Nations. And uh, knowing him as we do, or as we have seen so far, that he's a man who does not mince his words and he calls a spade a spade. Uh, we just can imagine what the atmosphere that is going to be in that auditorium when uh, the Zambian president shall be writing or rather spelling out the issues of great concern that ZANU-PF has started to do because uh, we are seeing that ZANU-PF really its bully attitude has really gone into other nations and other nations or other rather other 
political parties of other nations are succumbing to this pressure. We are seeing also the ANC is succumbing to the pressure. Uh, people like Mbalula, Fikile Mbalula, also becoming like another uh, Patrick Chinamasa on the other side of the Limpopo River. You know, spewing more and more propaganda and even, you know, expressing more of the arrogance that we have always known, I mean, uh, Zanu PF having in Zimbabwe. So what we are saying today is uh, Emerson Mnangagwa is going to be seen as a dark horse when he enters the United Nations General Assembly. Many issues of human rights, of torture, of, uh, of uh, the killings, of the stolen election, issues of uh, the breach of the constitution of Zimbabwe from electoral processes, even to the running of the nation, and you know, the hurriedly uh, inauguration that he undertook, you know, just to try and despite the Sadiq board that was supposed to be coming in to settle issues. And also we see him hurriedly, you know, bring up a corrupt cabinet that he places also of electing his own children into positions of power and positions of influence and this indeed is going to be uh, a, a very dark cloud that hangs over him so we also know that he lives, lives as usual wearing his bravado going to the united nations and yet still there is still issues that are burning within the party zanu pf itself back home so while he lives for the united nations he lives a boiling boiling zanu pf back home and uh, heaven knows what may happen in his absence. While we have reports that are coming from inside that are saying the military is not impressed at all, the military is not happy with what he has done, especially on the appointment of his children and his uh, cronies into the, the cabinet. It's not going to be easy for him. It's a, an issue that could be taken advantage of, of his absence at the a United Nations uh, meeting that they may sit down and begin to have caucuses and discussing and uh, you know planning on how uh, they could tackle the issue of the legitimacy that uh, is hanging over Zimbabwe and its leadership. So when we look at it deeply, you would find that uh, the army also is in jeopardy when they look at the kind of space that Emerson Mnangagwa has placed them in. Remember, the army having taken uh, the, nation, the country by a coup in 2017, most of the generals and the top uh, uh, bureaucrats of the army they would want to have a political system that can be able to protect them behind there because those are criminal issues that they've done if uh, they are brought back in uh, in a judiciary system that is really democratic and and you know uh, that is independent and professional those are charges that can stick so the army itself would also want to have a trojan horse that really runs without any uh, issues that are hanging now that uh, emerson mnangagwa is issues that are hanging right from inside zanu pf itself as a party issues that are ra running from uh, his own cabal his own clique of of the Lacoste. You see, they have all these issues that are hanging and uh, ZANU-PF uh, itself having divided between G40 and Lacoste, they still have the fights that are inside and Emerson Nangagwa also does not really know who belongs where. Many, many people still belong to the G40. They are still leaking information. They are still working behind the scenes to make sure that they pull him down. And the militaries are aware of such issues. And the military is also capable of switching you know, from Lacoste back to G40 and they uphold a, a G40 leadership when they see that the Lacoste is going to sink together with them because the possibility of sinking together with them is very, very high. So Emerson Mnangagwa leaves a very crucial a boiling point that is happening within the state and of the political structures as, as well as the security structures, which we may never know by the time of his coming back what plans could be, could be hatched if General Chiwenga still has any command within the structures of the uh, securocrats, it is possible that many, many plans could be made as to how they can get rid of the leader of the pilot of the sinking ship. So what we are uh, saying here is uh, uh, while at least they may try to uh, you know, normalize things and try to want to prove to the whole world as if all is well, things are not well at all. 
things are not well for Emerson Nangagwa. Things are not well for his family. Things are not well for ZANU-PF. Things are not well for his cabinet. Things are not well in the military. Things are not well also in the CIO. Things are not well even in the police force. We understand the police also, while they were asked to vote, even during the time of the elections, to vote for the incumbent, uh, we see that many, many uh, ballots came out to show that they were voted, they were actually voted for the opposition. The same thing happened also in the military camps. Emerson Nakag was beaten in many, many military camps. And uh, also the MPs of ZANU PF would get more figures than the figures that he himself got. So he's a very unelectable individual, an unpopular individual, a, a, an individual who is just, you know, imposing himself. And yet the people that are surrounding him, it's only that they are just afraid of each other of, as to who would start, who would bail the cat. But uh, it is only a matter of time. We, as we watch and as we analyze, I can tell you uh, definitely that uh, the lifespan of uh, the president of uh, Emerson Mnangagwa is very, very limited. If he crosses into the second year of his incumbency, uh, it is going to really be a miracle. So let's see what is going to be happening at the United Nations and how it's going to be received and what impact it is going to have both outside internationally and nationally. Till we meet again, let's meet again in other uh, videos that we are going to be posting here and always subscribe share and like and also put a comment what do you think about his presidency do you see him surviving up to five years put a comment and we shall be discussing in the next video i sign off shalom